Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco, creator of Approval Test, and in this episode, we're going to continue on the third part of how to test hard-to-test code. If you haven't seen the previous two episodes on the peel and the slice, I suggest you give them a watch now, because this episode is going to build on those two episodes to show how to use them in combination. As a quick recap, first we talked about the peel, which is where you have a hard-to-test piece of code at the very beginning of a method, making it hard to get into the method. The idea is to separate that into two methods. The peel, which has the hard part preventing you from getting in, and then the rest of the method, which you can just ignore the peel and go straight to the good part. This also allows you to pass in any pieces of information that you might need to control. The second technique is the slice, which is a form of mocking. The idea here is that you have a hard to test piece in the middle of your code. And instead of going out to this hard piece, you're going to put in a fake and go to a fake that gives you a nice easy run. That makes it easy to run anything in the middle, and the peel makes it easy to run anything that prevents you from getting in. But of course, it also gives you an easy way to get stuff into the method that you might need to fake out. And that's what we're going to look at today. So here we are where we left off yesterday. I have this mock alarm clock that's being tested, where I'm overriding the ready to ring. This is my fake. The nice thing is I had an easy way to get the mock alarm clock in here, because I could start the test at this level. I'm going to talk about using the peel and the slice, which makes it even easier to get this in, and reduces a lot of unnecessary code. So first, let's talk about the method that's being tested, turn on. The, meth or the property in here that's giving us trouble is this is ready to ring call, which is in the middle of the method, and is the reason we need to put in a fake and use the slice. However, if I extract this as a delegate, now I can call it directly. I have to first change this to be a funct of bool. Otherwise, C-sharp cannot do the inference needed. But now that I have that, I can extract the whole rest of the body as a new method using the peel technique. And I'm going to make this public. Once I've done this, I can inline this to make that slightly easier to read. And now I have my peel and the method that's easy to test. And now it's easy to test because I can pass in the dependency that I need to fake out. And to do that over here, all I have to do is pass in the method I want here. So here's that little piece of logic. I'm going to copy that and add it directly as a lambda. Now to do that, I'm also going to need this counter out. So I'm going to paste that here. But once I've done this, I no longer need my mock alarm clock, and I can just reference count directly. You can see that this works, and now I no longer need this extra piece of code. In fact, I don't even need to know when the alarm is set, because it's not really what I'm testing anymore. What I'm testing is, given an alarm clock and a fake method to figure out when it's supposed to ring. In this case, it's supposed to ring on the fifth time it's called. When I call turn on, it calls this until it's told to ring. Afterwards, ringing is true, and indeed, I've been called five times. Much simpler piece of code to write, much simpler piece of code to test, because I've allowed the one thing that I'm dependent on to be easily passed in through a parameter. So that's the peel and slice together. Before I close, I'd like to highlight Rich Yumel, who worked with me on approvals in the PHP world and introduced me to some very, very tough to test and refactor legacy code. And it was through working on these kind of projects that we really started to buckle down and figure out how can I quickly lock a piece of code, refactor it, clean it up, and then go without a lot of overhead on the process. If you have any questions, tweet them with the hash approval test. I monitor that frequently and will answer you promptly.